Mark day 147 of the Trump administration, and now the vice president has hired a lawyer. Mike Pence has hired Richard Cullen, former U.S. attorney, colleague of James Comey, who also happens to be godfather to one of the Comey children. And there is this tonight from the Washington Post, quote, special counsel is investigating Jared Kushner's business dealings. The report notes that Kushner now joins a list that already includes Mike Flynn, Paul Manafort, and Carter Page, all of whom under scrutiny. Mueller's team is also scrutinizing Kushner's December meetings with two prominent Russians, Ambassador Sergei Kislyak, and a prominent and Putin-connected Russian banker named Sergei Garkov. The president, meanwhile, was up and at it early on Twitter this morning, 6.55 a.m., quote, they made up a phony collusion with the Russian story, found zero proof, so now they go for obstruction of justice on the phony story. Nice. 62 minutes later, you are witnessing the single greatest witch hunt in American political history, led by some very bad and conflicted people. Make America great again. This afternoon brought two more that reached back to the campaign and the Clintons. They came out just before a new story dropped in Politico headlined, White House aides fret over Trump's Russia probe obsession. Quoting from this report, President Trump has sometimes, without prompting, injected, I'm not under investigation, into conversations with associates and allies. He has watched hours of TV coverage every day, sometimes even storing morning news shows on his TiVo to watch in the evening and complain nonstop. It's basically all he talks about on the phone, said one advisor. And about those reports earlier this week that the president was considering firing Robert Mueller. Quote, he is totally in a box now, one friend said, and it might make him want to fire Mueller more. And while we'll have more on this later, tonight was the big congressional baseball game in Washington, with the number three Republican in Congress, Steve Scalise, remaining in critical condition. There was much talk about lowering the rhetoric, bipartisanship. Then came this fundraising email from the Trump Pence team, quoting in part, All Democrats have done is obstruct and manically scream the word Russia until they're blue in the face. They've sparked protests in the streets and used the media to spew vicious rhetoric against the president. It goes on to borrow a phrase from Nixon, asserting that Trump's followers are the silent majority. We also have some breaking news tonight, but let's first bring in tonight's starting panel, news and finance anchor at Yahoo News, Biana Golodriga, senior foreign affairs correspondent at Politico, Michael Crowley, and White House reporter for the Associated Press, Vivian Salama. Welcome to you all, and I hold in my hand uh, the breaking news. This is a press release that came out in the last hour from the Justice Department, and social media, where attention spans go to die is losing its collective head. They're standing on a ledge with this. This is the Associate Attorney General, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. Uh, Americans should exercise caution before accepting as true any stories attributed to anonymous officials, particularly when they do not identify the country, let alone the branch or agency of government, with which the alleged sources supposedly are affiliated. Americans should be skeptical about anonymous allegations. The Department of Justice has a long established policy to neither confirm nor deny such allegations. Michael, you're going to get the first crack at this. Again, the theorizing tonight on social media ranged from is this a cry for help by the number two guy at Justice or has DOJ been hacked? <laughs> well, it's an extraordinary statement, Brian, and it's kind of Trumpian in its tone, uh, which is not what you would expect from high levels of the Justice Department. Uh, uh, very uh, political, very combative, doesn't have that sort of lawyerly cool we associate with the Justice Department. And I would say in substance, Brian, you know, this is a recurring theme that these stories that have anonymous or background quotes in them quoting officials should be treated with great 
skepticism that there's something inherently wrong with them. Brian, I would say, particularly in America's top news outlets, the record of these stories has been very, very good. I mean, Americans should uh, turn a skeptical eye to all the information they receive. But, you know, the Washington Post is a highly professional, credible news outlet. And I just think this is kind of a weak attack to say that a story that is based on anonymous sources or background quotes is inherently not trustworthy, likely to be wrong. You know, the, the track record does not bear that out. You know, time and time again, the work of these papers that are breaking these big stories has been substantiated uh, and is extremely credible. So I think it's, uh, it's a very odd statement on multiple levels. Michael, you're right. And to underscore that, we've had your colleagues on from publications like The Times, The Post, um, in stories where they've quoted 20 to 30 sources, sourcing by the dozen, the likes of which we had never seen. Obviously, people should be cautious with anonymous sources. Vivian, you cover this crowd, uh, and Michael went there. It sounded to a lot of people, this statement did, like it was somehow dictated. I mean, there's no real way to tell if it was dictated or not, but there's definitely been a major pushback by the administration, uh, Rod Rosenstein not being uh, unique here in terms of trying to push back against e any of these stories that are making allegations against the administration. And, you know, Anonymous sources are never ideal, and it's not something that we choose to practice. We do it to protect sources. Uh, I know my colleagues do this. I know I do it, where we take extreme caution when we, and, and we only use anonymous sources when we absolutely have to. And obviously, we have to also raise the, the case that the White House also uses anonymous sources. Sure. They, they choose to speak anonymously very often, and this is something that we are constantly discussing with them as well, where we're asked to quote uh, White House officials because they don't want to go on record with certain things. And so it does go both ways. Obviously, um, they make uh, an excellent point that anonymous sources have to be um, scrutinized by the public. We sh they should be scrutinized by the public. But I also can say that for a number of my colleagues, and certainly for myself, when we do that, we use extreme caution and we don't take it lightly. Biana, this talks about questioning the, the country these stories are coming from. Yeah, it goes beyond just questioning reporters and, and publications here in the U.S. You start questioning countries. Is the only country that has been in question when it comes to <coughs> spreading false news in the United States, and all 17 intelligence agencies have said publicly that they believe Russia spreads false information. It's, it's ironic, given that this administration is sort of the last one standing who has not come out and definitively said that the Russians are behind the spreading of false information. So now to use country as a sort of backdrop, as a warning from Rosenstein, does raise a few eyebrows, to say the least. Uh, Michael, uh, the, the wording and tone, especially of today's Twitter performance by the president, um, there is a siege mentality. We are hearing yeah. that and seeing that even from some surrogates. Um, the talking, one of the talking points has been to call this a witch hunt, some victimization, some uh, persecution. Um, and that's, that's becoming in, increasingly prevalent uh, in the last couple of days. Yeah, you know, Brian, I think that if you're President Trump, there are two kind of tracks that this is happening on. You know, there's the legal trap track, and then there's the political track. And it may be that the strategy he and the White House are pursuing is effective in the sense of speaking to his base and feeling like he's got to hold that Republican base together and make sure that members of Congress continue to more or less defend them. They're not doing it very with very much enthusiasm. But basically, Republicans are on Trump's side. And I think he uh, recognizes that and is playing a political strategy of keeping the base together. Uh, that's part of it. it. It's not always consistent with the smart legal track. And I think that's what is upsetting White House aides and lawyers who are trying to help Trump out. They feel like he's not paying attention to the legal track. But, you know, if you look at the poll numbers, He's still, uh, you know, 10 points above where George Bush was when he was at rock bottom in the Gallup polls. Bush went down into the mid-20s. Trump is in, you know, the mid-30s, high, uh, high 30s, pushing 40. So politically, uh, maybe he's doing something right. But finally, Brian, you just get a picture of a guy who is completely consumed by this. We had a story about this in Politico tonight. It's a stark contrast to Bill Clinton, who, when he was going through impeachment, did a pretty good job of keeping his cool, compartmentalizing, and I think succeeded politically in part 
part because it looked like he was going about the job of the presidency and doing the business of the United States, and it, it really doesn't feel that way with Donald Trump right now. And Vivian, I want to quote uh, from this uh, Politico uh, piece tonight, uh, and that says, aides say they fear Trump's incendiary tweets and public comments have spurred countless leaks of damaging information. In the words of one, chief strategist Steve Bannon has told others that he believes the FBI is now out to get the Trump administration. Vivian, we've seen Bannon come in and out of favor. This now blames in a looking glass effect, blames what the president is saying, a, 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 a thread we've had before uh, for the leaks. That's right. And so Steve Bannon has come in and out of favor, as you say, as have a number of other aides. It just seems to be this whole palace intrigue that we've seen play out since this administration has come to office. But there's something really important that we have to observe here, and that is that a couple of weeks ago, uh, President Trump gave his blessing into this into this Russia investigation. He said, I have nothing to hide. I've been told I'm not under investigation. And so I, I welcome them to go ahead and see f carry this investigation out, see whatever they find. And then for him to backtrack and call it a witch hunt and really lash out, uh, whether or not he He's hiding anything, and of course, it's too early in the investigation to know. It doesn't look good. It makes it seem like he's getting paranoid. Uh, it, you know, these fi these very early morning uh, tweets, um, you know, show that he is possibly alarmed and reacting in haste at times and in uh, emotional reactions to what he's seeing. And so, you know, this is this is something that's going to be playing out for many, many months, possibly even years to come. It is a long, it is a bulky investigation, and so. For for President Trump to have to, you know, kind of find his inner peace, his inner zen, and and go with this, um, if he really truly believes that there's nothing to hide and that this investigation will vindicate him, as he said um, numerous times. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me, or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.